go. Okay. So just initiating our Facebook. Welcome everyone to the Mastermind Book Club. In tonight's episode, we're reviewing part one of two parts to the book that has been written by Dr. John J. Rate, mm -hmm. Spark the Revolutionary New Science of Exercise and the Brain. Spark the Revolutionary New Science of Exercise and the Brain. This book has come at a most opportune time for me and my family. I hope that if you had a chance to either listen to it or read it, it has immensely knocked you out of your shoes because it knocked me out. It's very important. It fills in a gap that I've been trying to close in with my daughter who has cerebral palsy, is, has spasticity, is starting to emerge in speaking, starting to emerge in building upper body muscle. So this book brings it home, or it, it brings it closer to home, I should say. And that's what we're going over today. So spark the revolution. I'm sorry that for my Facebook, you won't be able to see my shared screen. I don't know why, but I have good news is that I have a recording. And when I'm finished with it, with this recording, I'm going to add it onto our uh, Facebook session, uh, Facebook group. So that way you have that information. Spark the revolutionary new science of exercise and the brain. Here's part one of two parts. Mastermind Book Club. Right now, the front of your brain is firing signals about what you're reading. What are you reading? I hope you read Spark. And how much of it you soak up has a lot to do with whether there is a proper balance of neurochemicals and growth factors to bind neurons together. Exercise has documented dramatic effect on these essential ingredients. This is what John Rote says. How has it affected exercise? Well, in many instances, this book has hit upon a few of the factors that many of us don't know how to deal with, except going to our pharmacist or a doctor and asking for a pill. Is that the reality? Yes, it is the reality. Most of us require a pill to, to be able to deal with our stress, our anxiety levels, our ADHD, our um, ability to be able to deal with just stress in general. I know I mentioned stress already, but there are different kinds of stress stress that relates to relationships, stress that relates to um, marital problems, as well as relationships, because relationships could be in a business, uh, family, children. It could be relating to money, which is the number one stress kicker right now. Uh, health, because of COVID-19, yes, it's stressful. It can be stressful. Being locked up in the home, confined to the home, being unable to go out and and have a good time with your friends that can uh, that can affect many people so we're trying to learn here how to deal with our stress in a better way because there are better ways but most of us won't tend to like it for many for many reasons a pill is much easier Obviously, you pop a pill and you forget about everything else. However, it's fleeting. It's short-lived. It won't last forever. You're not always going to be able to um, be able to perform in a method that you're going to be able to prove to the world that you're doing what it takes to be Welcome done. Welcome everyone to the Mastermind Book Club. Oh, In tonight's episode, we're reviewing part one of two parts. Sorry about that. Didn't know that when I did that, it was going to do that. So there we go. Now I know. Now I'm going to share the screen again because uh, I think we figured this out finally. Uh, okay. So 
John Rate is very important doctor in our time. Why? Because he tells us how exercise accelerates learning. Exercise mm. accelerates learning. Exercise accelerates learning. How does he start out with this book? He starts out with a specific high school somewhere in Chicago or Illinois area. Now, as I heard the whole story about the school, let's take the good out of that school. Number one, it's one of the schools that's highly rated around the world from having the most intellectual kids. There are many factors into this. There are factors that are questionable. There are factors that are unbelievable. But the reality is, is that this is one of the number one schools. I believe it's in Naperville, uh, Illinois or Chicago. I believe if, if I'm wrong, uh, I can, I'm going to be reviewing this book again because I like this so much. Uh, why is this important? Before we go into why it's important, another statistical fact about this school is that the surrounding businesses that are around it are all catered to science. And that's another wild fact. Why do I say that? Because a lot of the parents work in these science factories, uh, laboratories, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, these are factories or, or laboratories that require you to have certain skills, certain degree of knowledge, uh, let's see, at least a high uh, college level, if not a master's level. What does that mean? That most of these kids are probably educated. However, this school has gone across what used to be horrible grades for the tape, same type of standing school to exceptionally unbelievable grades. How did it achieve it? Through exercise. Through exercise, which, is, which accelerates the learning process. But not only that, when you exercise, your body naturally releases a protein called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. BD. BDNF. I've heard this term before. I didn't know what it meant, but I, now I do. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Yes, this is a tongue twister, but I've said it enough. I think I've got it down. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Blah. Into the bloodstream, this BDNF, and up to the brain. In the 90s, scientists discovered BDNF rapidly accelerates brain cell growth and increases the ability to learn. Researchers found that if they sprinkled BDNF on two neurons in a Petri dish, the cells automatically sprouted new branches, producing the same structural growth required for learning and causing me to think of BDNF as a miracle grow for the brain. BDNF. BDNF gathers in reserve pools near the synapses and is unleashed when we get our blood pumping. Exercise sparks the master molecule of the learning process. Exercise sparks the master molecule of the learning process. John Rattay quote, exercise, exercise enhances creativity. It doesn't only enhance the learning process, it enhances creativity. During exercise, the hippocampus brain region receives a large amount of BDNF growth factor. The hippocampus acts like a cartographer for the brain, linking new information to existing memories. So my daughter has a brain injury. She has cerebral palsy. Her hippocampi was affected and her basal ganglia was affected. However, I've known that when she does exercise, she improves all around uh, well-being from knowledge to communication to just wanting to attempt to do more and trying to uh, have more strength to be able to um, have upper body muscles. A memory, scientists believe, is a collection of information fragments dispersed throughout the brain. The hippocampus serves as a way 
station, receiving the fragments from the cortex and then bundling them together and sending them back up as a map of a unique new pattern of connections. Exercise sparks growth in the Hepal campus, helping you create new connections between existing ideas and allowing you to come up with novel solutions to complex problems. Have you ever wondered why Tony Robbins uh, Unleash the Power Within focuses on spurts of exercise all throughout his UPW events, his business mastery and so on? Why? Because it sparks growth in the hippocampus, helping you create new connections between existing ideas and allowing you to come up with novel solutions to complex problems. Tony Robbins has the number one method in the world right now. But this book brings his secrets out into the open. That's why he has every 10, 15, 20 minutes an exercise session. So now I know that when I do my seminars, guess what? It's okay. I might copy him a little bit, imitate him a little bit. It's not going to be a complete copy, but I will imitate because he's the leader. He's shown me this. And this book ties in why it's so important to have these exercise spurts. If you have an important afternoon brainstorming session scheduled, going for a short run, an intense run, an intense immediate aerobic workout during lunchtime is the best idea that you can come up with. This is what Dr. John Rote came up with. Now, this is the culmination of part one, but this is the important thing about part one. Exercise works like an antidepressant. Mm -hmm. It helps to alleviate those moments of anxiety, of stress, of anger, of depression, of sadness, of worries. How does it do that? You see, we create a crisis out of nowhere. And this crisis is known as those uh, moments that I just talked, moments of anxiety, of stress, of worries, of anger, of fear. ADHD is also a stress factor. But ADHD goes on a different level, meaning even though they work out into going into a good moment, ADHD is a stress junkie and they go, they find their way back into these stressful moments. And that's why we need certain chemicals in the body. At certain times, we need dopamine and neuropinephrine, but these are stress-inducing factors. So that's why we have epinephrine and cortisol, which block insulin in order to give you happier chemicals. The brain needs three chemicals. It needs trace minerals, it needs glucose, and it needs oxygen. Oxygen. Glucose and trace minerals are brought up by these exercises. One of those amino acids that exists in your brain needs to be replenished by what is known as GABA. I will mention next time what GABA is, but if, in case if you research before I do, it's an important supplement that we need once in a while, not all the time, once in a while to be able to have that high performing energy, to be able to avoid stress. It's a supplement, it's not a pill. Remember that stress, during stress, it's an important time because when you have stress, you can strive to learn and you can strive to grow. And you can strive, you can attempt to break out of whatever circumstance you're in. Stress is a matter of necessity for many of us, for me and my family, my work lifestyle. Just like one member today said, um, wow, David, I don't know how you keep up with your schedule. You're so busy. I'm so busy. I am busy. That's correct. And as a matter of fact, 
I'm so busy that I had to cut down one of my meetings on a weekly basis because I don't have enough time to allocate to that meeting. And I had to cut it down and work it so that we have people on a one-on-one -on -one basis for many reasons. But it seems to be working well because I got out of my stressful situation. I was able to deal with it in a pretty quickly and rapidly way. When did I do this? After I did exercise. I went up the stairs, nine flights of stairs in my building. I went up seven times, seven times. It took me 20 minutes and in those 20 minutes, I sweated bullets. That's right, that's what we need to do in order to create the chemicals we need to be able to bring resources to our lives and to other people's lives. So this is it for this review, my, this formal review. And now I wanted to open up to some questions in the people who are in Zoom. I don't know if the Facebook group will be able to hear, but we'll know after this recording. Does anyone have any comments or questions or anything that they learned that they want to add? I welcome that right now. Um, I can say something. Um, I believe that- You're going to have to unmute I, yourself, Martha. I mute. Um, no, I'm not mute. I'm fine. You can hear me? I still can't hear you, Martha, for whatever reason. Let me see. I can hear her. Let's see. I said hello, my... hello. I can hear you fine. Hello, no, I cannot hear you, Martha. There we go. I just opened it up, so you should be able to see how to unmute there. No. Yeah. Martha, maybe it's the speaker on your on your laptop. You have to raise the volume, maybe. Uh, let me see. You hear me now? I raise the volume. No, can't hear. Let's see if it's me. Hello? Yeah, I raised the volume. Okay, we see you now. We can hear you now. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I believe that exercise uh, prevents from a lot of diseases, and not only the brain, for the body too. Um, it's, uh, it helps. Exercise help to get more oxygen more oxygen to the body. It is important to have. And it helps uh, all the parts of the body. And I see they can prevent Alzheimer to exercise. Correct. So all the, the neurochemical coming to the brain after you exercise. And the cortisol and the other uh, adrenaline, they are, um, they are the neurochemicals to destroy your body because you leave, the body leaves these hormones against stress, fighting, or any, any, prevent, any prevention. And that's the killer for the, for the heart and for the brain, the two hormones I talking about before. So if you want to keep it a healthy life, yes. you start, have a sharp brain. Yes. You have to exercise. Correct, correct, it's correct. Exercise. And, so you um, are I, correct, Martha, on that. that no, uh, only the exercise, good diet too. Correct. Good diet. Most of us, uh, don't realize that no matter how ill we become, exercise can be our friend. Most people don't realize that. Most people will never realize it. They despise of exercise. That's just how life has been. And if you go back many years, we all, you know, in general, people used to walk everywhere, used to walk very long distances. And that has been somewhat taken away, somewhat made easier in that most of us don't walk. Now, many people who live in the big cities, just because of living in a big city, you need to walk because there's limited parking and so on. And that has brought an advantage to 
a lot of people in that exercise to, in a limited way has, has been brought back. However, the choices of food that we have on a daily basis don't add to a healthy lifestyle, right? And that's what you were referring to, Martha. And um, jo Dr. John Rate mentions that exercise helps those with cancer and with other ailments as well. Uh, not only stress, but um, there's two types of advancement possible for the body. One is for the spirit, and that is knowledge, reading books. Yes. And the other one is exercise, and that's for the body. Right? And that's what jo Dr. John Rate tells us. Uh, thank you, uh, Martha. I was going to leave that for next week, but you seem to always get ahead of me, and that's good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, anything else, Martha or, or Reg? Uh, I think you guys covered. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Uh, no, I think you guys covered uh, this a lot. I mean, obviously, we don't try to do everything in one in one sitting, but um, I mean, this is all like key stuff. You know, we know a lot of this stuff. Oh, we. Well, you know what? Let me back state. Let me back back it up. We think we know, but we don't ult ultimately know until we actually start doing it. So this stuff is out there and it's presented and there are enough studies on it to say that things like exercise promote good health and exercise you know, gets the, the blood circulated and exercise can get the, the oxygen moving through your body to make you oxygenated, which is obviously going to be a good thing, you know, such so that your brain, with the brain being this major uh, thing in your body that it needs a lot of oxygen. So if you're doing things like exercise, you're promoting a lot more oxygen to the brain and that's going to have ne uh, uh, positive effects. But the thing about it is even as much as we know that and how significant that can be, you know, with all the studies that have been proven and individuals who are big on exercise and then on top of that, there are other things obviously you want to do like good diet, good other stuff, good thoughts and all that good stuff. But as much as we know that we, we, many of us just don't do it. And I promote exercise because I understand the importance of it and I make it a daily regimen. But, uh, you know, that is not just about what I'm doing. It's about making sure other people are doing it because it's more, the more that, more that we can do this, the more that more people can benefit such that they can be, you know, healthy overall and they can, um, you know, improve in areas, many areas of their lives that maybe otherwise they're not improving on people, improving them because they're not doing things like exercising and then, adding with that the other things such as what you know what you know basically consuming better foods and thinking better thoughts and the whole bit so you can't discount exercise in any way because exercise is a big deal and if you just were to put that into your daily schedule at least or even on a regular schedule it could really be uh highly beneficial to you right. so, i mean just on a very basic level speaking about that because that is something that's very important very 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 important and um I mean, we can have a million studies and sometimes it's still not enough for people to, for, to process in people's heads that this is something that maybe we ought to, many of us, more of us should put into our, um, into our lifestyle. Correct, 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 correct. And, um, you know, thank you for sharing, Reggie. And Reggie uh, just reminded me that during one of the chapters, uh, Dr. John Rote says how one of his colleagues at the age of 33 was given a very important position and as he was given this position a few days later I guess maybe it is his exam to get into this position uh, he finds out he has some type of cancer or tumor and this person has somewhat of a breakdown however he didn't just give up what he did was he slammed the brakes and he started to do exercise as his number one therapy method. Now, a doctor speaking to you about exercise is not very common. However, those that know the power of exercise will jump into it. This doctor was a cross country runner, just like I was long distance. And he left running because after college, that's just what everybody does. And it took him, what? 10, 12 years to get back into it and boom, 
he's back. He's doing two math marathons a year, supposedly, since that time, back in 30, uh, when he was 33. I don't know how long ago that was, because it doesn't explain that in the book. However, the reality is, is that uh, we neglect the importance of exercise in that if you want answers, the best way to get answers is by going on a run, doing some cardio workout, doing some aerobics, maybe Zumba, something that will give you uh, your, heart, your heart rate pumping at like double its rate or one and a half times its rate. It depends on you because some people cannot afford to go at a higher rate because of their uh, circumstance, but then you start out at a lower level with a, with a proper doctor and nutrition and so on. Now, most nutritionists out there don't really know exactly what to accomplish if you have constipation or if you have certain, certain other uh, underlying ailments, but that's where natural hygiene coaches like I do come in to assist people with that. But in reality is you have vast sources of information and this book ties in what exercise can to do to the brain but what books can do to the brain as well as what exercise can do to the body so it's unbelievable but it ties in both of those together for me because of the background i've gone into and reggie is correct when he says he works out every day and the reality is, is can you imagine if we worked out every day, what would happen? Not taking days off. You don't have to be a beast. Just doing a little bit of a workout on a daily basis will make a difference and it, it'll get you started. That will be your addictive space, exercising. I've been there. I know what it is like. And correct me if I'm wrong, Reggie, but don't you feel like you need to exercise? I don't know that I need to, but it's become so routine that it's something that what you want to do with some of these things in general, uh, this is extrapolated, I'm going a little bit beyond just exercise, is create habits that, is create habits. And then hopefully you create good habits. So this is a good habit for me and that it's something that, a, it's a habit and so that means like automatically I'm thinking about it so with that you know at that point it being a habit, habit you do and at some point you just do them without even thinking about it yes. but the thing yes. with exercise obviously you you are thinking about and there's actually motion there's actually energy there's actually commitment that you have to put towards it because you actually have to go down on the floor and do some push-ups and some sit-ups and get on the stage chair and do some uh, dips and so on and so forth but because it's a habit there's almost like no excusing it. So there's not a point where you're like, oh, I'm not going to do it. It's, it's at the point where, because I've done, I've done push-ups every day for probably nine years, maybe missed a couple of days or something very minimal in that stretch. And then this, this new routine that I've done, I've done every day since, or well, I switched it, but I started a new routine in October. So now we're looking at almost a year of this. So every single day of that new routine for, Actually, the next one was actually started in April, but I started the other one in October. But nonetheless, doing it something every day is something that now it's, it's cemented in your head. So you just basically, it make, you, you make it, it's at the point where it's essentially, uh, what do you call it? Um, you, you, you sort of, um, you don't, not the word excuse, but it's non-negotiable. It's a non-negotiable thing. Correct. That's, that's the way I, I see it, Reg, is... Um... Uh, I have no choice is what I tell myself. I've got to do it. Um, yeah, you have to make it because I create, I create the law. Like well, ultimately we can create our own laws. Yes. And that's kind of what it comes down to creating your own laws. But Correct. exercise and better and creating better health and thinking better thoughts and doing better things for yourself. Like those types of immutable laws, if you're going to make them that, you can make them that yourself. Those type of immutable laws can have like lasting effect on you. So if you can get into that, that place where, you know, part, part of it is discipline and part of it is just desire and wanting to be better and all that good stuff. But if you can actually commit to some of those things, and then once you set yourself in that, on that path, 
and you create these habits, then the habits will will make, basically make you. So that's that's a powerful thing. That's It'll make correct. you into, into who you who you desire. And even if it takes have a period have a long period of time because that really doesn't matter. Because even whatever exercise I'm doing, it's the fact that you're doing it. So maybe you don't do five thousand pounds of weights every day every day, but you're doing something. So over some period of time you will see an effect. You will see a change. And correct. that's what you have to work towards. Correct, correct, correct. And you know, according to Don Dr. John J. Rate, what is the best time of exercise? Early in the morning. First thing in the first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. That's right. I love to exercise in the morning. But if you can't fit it in at that time, then you've got to do it when you can fit it into your schedule. Uh, if it's at lunchtime, if it's after work, whatever it is, that's when you've got to fit it in. So exercise is better than no exercise. And I highly recommend that if you don't have an exercise plan, a strategy to improve your health, then what are you waiting for? I mean, start out now that you're probably healthier than you will be in the next five to 10 years if you don't make any corrections. I mean, one of the biggest illnesses out there is constipation. I wrote about this in, my, in one of my books that's coming out soon. Uh, why? Well, tell me a news source that is mentioning constipation. None. There are no advertisements for constipation, except for Pepto-Bismol, and uh, I think that's it. I don't think the, the other ones come out, but, yeah, but it doesn't. A lot, of, a lot of water. It, well, that's, it depends. It, it, it depends. It, water is very important for, uh, for constipation, but it's not the only thing. Everyone has a different story. And, you know, nothing is clearer than I, we just had a family member three days ago with diabetes, serious diabetes. Wait, is that right? Three days ago, went to the emergency room. But let me tell you how this started. I didn't know this. I knew he was overweight, super overweight, like one of my friends that uh, I don't know if he's listening to, but I know that we have a mutual friend listening right now. Um, super overweight. And when he found out he had diabetes, he started to do a diet program. I don't know what kind of diet. I don't know what he was trying to accomplish. However, you cannot just do a diet just because you have, you know, diabetes, for example. You've got to know what you're doing. This person almost died doing a diet. I don't like diets in general. I prefer to call them eating healthier, right? Diet is something that you start and that you finish soon. But eating healthier is usually you continue on through the rest of your life. So just remember that exercise and the brain will also depend on, on your eating habits. Eating healthier is always better, right? And just as, as Reg said, you know, before we started this call, this uh, live video, Doritos. I mean, everyone loves Doritos, but he doesn't like them. On a very minor occasion, once in a blue moon, I'll have them. I'll have a Doritos. I won't have a lot, but I have a few. But they're very addictive because they have gluten. So this is it for part one review today. What do I recommend to you? If you're looking to get more out of your brain, then you've got to put more into it in the reference of exercise. In, the, in, in reference to exercise, glucose, trace minerals, and what else? And oxygen. 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 Yes, that's correct. So that's it. So I want to thank you all for being with us today at the, this Mastermind Book Club. Spark the Revolutionary New Science of Exercises in the Brain is a very powerful book. If you didn't get a chance to listen to it, when is now a good time to listen to this book? I guess as soon as you can. I ordered a copy of this book because I want to read it. It's very important for me, for my family, for my daughter in improving her cerebral palsy state. All right, everyone, have a great evening. Dennis, thank you for joining us, my brother.
Thank you. Reggie, thank you. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Ty, Tawana, thank you very much. Have a great evening. And until thank next you. week, we're going to cover part two of this book. But I'm going to go over this whole book because it's very, very important information to improving your health. All right? Dennis uh, has said awesome information and presentation always. Dennis, you're the awesome person to have on this group. Reggie and Martha, you're awesome and Ty. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, everyone. You too. Have a great evening, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you.